Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. So today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about cryptocurrency privacy. Not so much privacy in the sense of pick a strong password and all that kind of stuff, but more in the sense of privacy cryptocurrencies. What is that all about? And what are the different technologies that these cryptocurrencies use in order to be more private? You know, in the beginning of the year, people were all saying, 2018 is going to be the year of privacy. And I think they're right. Even though right now we might say 2018 is the year of regulation, um, along with regulation and more adoption comes a greater need for privacy. So I think it's very important that we kind of consider what's out there and what coins are offering that can really lend themselves to being truly private, anonymous, and secure forms of payment and transactions on blockchain. So let's take a little closer look at what I put together here in just a, a little PowerPoint, all right? So we've got privacy to talk about here. So so first of all, how does all of this work, all right? So let's, let's take a look at our non-privacy cryptocurrencies, okay? That's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, these are your basic like proof of concept. Here's what cryptocurrency is. Can I send digital money from one wallet to another? All right, and that's your like bare bones kind of stuff. Ethereum goes a step further in the sense that it allows for smart contracts. So it's keeping track of additional information beyond the actual currency part of it. So that does take things to another level, but nonetheless, it is a public kind of transaction. So here's the deal. All of these have a public address and those public transactions, when you send currency from one wallet to another, from one user to another, it's recorded on a public blockchain ledger. And you can access through an explorer, you can go to a website where you can type in any address, any Bitcoin address, any Ethereum address, any Litecoin address, and it'll show you the balance that they have on that particular address and all of the transactions that ever took place. This is blockchain.info and it's a Bitcoin blockchain explorer. So what you can do is put in a Bitcoin address up at the top here and search for it and it will tell you everything about that address. This is a public kind of thing, right? So you put in, this is just a random address I threw in here and I got uh, seven transactions there. It tells you the total received, how much Bitcoin is there. They have a QR code and all of the transactions um, plus their hashes, you know, so you can go deeper if you want. Like on the bottom one here, we can take a look at what was going on here. These two addresses sent a certain amount of Bitcoin to all of these addresses here. It tells you exactly how much Bitcoin was sent to each address uh, and the total there being 1.6. Um, you can look at... Uh, a tree chart here that gives you a little bit of a different kind of visualization. You can kind of move this around, cluster it by address, whatever. And it's very interesting. Um, now, how private is that? You know what I mean? It's not, it's not private at all. The only way it's private is the fact that there's no name attached to it, right? But all of the naysayers who think that Bitcoin is used for illegal activity and stuff like that, well, because of the public nature of this, it's not. I, I mean, it, I'm not gonna say it's not entirely. I mean, there's always that possibility and I don't condone that, but it's just one of those kind of things that um, it is much more difficult to get away with using Bitcoin for, you know, dark web type stuff or whatever uh, than you would really think. So that's non-private cryptocurrency. You have a public address and any transactions you do with that address are stored on a public blockchain ledger that anybody can access at any time and they can see not only where the Bitcoin was coming from but anywhere you sent it as well as your balance. So yeah, I mean, it's nice that you know it's able to facilitate so much. It's great, it's revolutionary and trust is probably the biggest part of the blockchain. However, the privacy thing is not there, like zero, you know what I mean? So how are we gonna get around that? Well, there are several different types of cryptocurrency out there that have tried to address that issue. So let's take a look at those. 
The first I want to talk about is Monero and its children, basically. Uh, we have Verge and Electronium here. Those other two are basically copies of Monero, what they call forks. And, you know, Verge and Electronium may have done some adjustments to the blockchain, may have even changed the way some of the things work, tweaked it here or there. You can do a little bit more research on each of those yourself, but they're essentially going to work the same way. And what happens here when a user wants to send Monero to another user, their public address will never appear on the blockchain. So in terms of like tracking them down via the Explorer, just like I was doing with Bitcoin, that can't happen with Monero. The other thing is when somebody sends Monero, it's not sent to the actual address that they're sending it to. It's sent to a randomly generated one-time use address. And the only other person on the blockchain that knows which address that is, is the recipient. So it may go through a whole bunch of different uh, nodes and, and, and each node it'll find out oh, not the right one, not the right one, not the right one. And finally, boom, hit the wallet address that it's supposed to be at. And that wallet address will go, yep, that's for me and deposit the transaction. So really interesting how that works. Now it's a very boiled down version, of course. You can do a little bit more research on that if you need. I'll have links in the description, by the way, with some good articles on what all this stuff is. Um, and finally, what they do is to make it even more difficult and more private is they start mixing in other random transactions at the same time. So kind of like you saw all of those other Bitcoin addresses attached to the one sender, well, same kind of thing is going to happen here with Monero, only any of those addresses that would appear on the blockchain are all random addresses because none of them will ever be anyone's public address. So it is super duper private. Another approach to privacy in cryptocurrency is ZK Snark technology, and that's predominantly used by Zcash, Zencash, Bitcoin Private, and a whole bunch of others. And essentially what it stands for is zero knowledge, succinct, non-interactive argument of knowledge. <laughs> I know, I'm so glad they shortened it. But basically here it is in a nutshell. With Bitcoin, transactions are validated by linking the sender address and the receiver address, as well as any input and output values. Okay, so how much you wanna send and what that output will be on the other end. And all that goes on the public blockchain like we just shown, like I just showed you. Now, with ZK Snarks, that's used to prove that the conditions for a valid transaction have been satisfied without revealing any crucial information about the addresses or values involved. So it does not reveal how much is being sent, nor does it reveal the sender's address or the recipient's address. Okay. But what it helps to do is basically prove that the encrypted transaction there is valid. Okay, so um, just more or less imagine once the transaction is sent, that, uh, that proof is attached to the package that's sent over to the receiver's address. The receiver address gets that package, looks at the proof, and says everything looks good opens it up and the transaction is complete. One last approach to privacy and cryptocurrency that I'm going to talk about is like we see with Dash. And of course, it's little stepchildren, LuxCoin and Foam here. Now, the way Dash works is it not only has ASIC miners and whatnot doing mining on the network, it also uses masternodes. And these masternodes have a unique function, not only to help secure the blockchain, but also to do something involving private sending. And basically what happens is through your Dash wallet, and this works the same for Lux and Foam as well, it will take whatever balance you have and divide it up into standard denominations. And it does that with different addresses. So, so it'll just basically have, you know, it can have up to 20 addresses in your one wallet and it'll just assign, you know, certain addresses will be 0.1, another address will be 10, another address will be one, you know, and um, once it has all those denominations sort of tallied up and figured out, then through the master nodes, it connects with other wallets, at least three other wallets and starts trading those same denominations with other people. So, you know, one for one, 10 for 10, 0.1 for 0.1. And before you know it, you have 
all of these different addresses that are all mixed up and you don't know what the heck's going on. It's untraceable after that. Now, it's something that you have to choose to do. So for those who want the option, it's there. You don't have to do it. Stealth address. That is essentially what Luxcoin is doing. It's a little different. It, it, it does the same mixing, okay? But with stealth address, it generates an untraceable link to the receiver's wallet. So it's kind of like Monero in that sense. And that's what I was saying about some of these other coins. Like you have the big daddy, you know, in this case, Dash. But then you got the little children of Dash, the little forks that have taken it a step further and have done even more work to make it even more private. So Luxcoin, you know, has gone that extra mile there to not only provide mixing, but also to provide that, uh, you know, stealth address so that nobody can even trace what it is that you've been doing. And that's especially important in projects like Luxcoin because they're, they're running parallel masternodes. They have a very private blockchain, which is used for companies or governments or organizations. And then they have a public blockchain. And how do they make sure that the private stays private? Well, stealth address. So there you have it, a very brief surface level introduction to different types of privacy technology being used in cryptocurrency. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like more information, please check the description down below for links to articles that I use to create the presentation. They go into a lot more detail than I was able to right here. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you get updates for future videos. We are less than 100 uh, subs away from 10K. So I would love to see that happen. It's going to be great for the channel. It's great for you guys. I want to keep making videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks so much, guys. And as always, God bless.